All right, welcome back to another episode of the Podium Pusher Podcast. As always, my name is Justin. I'm here with Brandon. Today, we're going to be talking about the 2024 silly season. 2023, for the first time in history, we had it where the grid was the exact same at the end of the year going into the next season. But this next year, we've got a lot of drivers out of contract, which means hopefully there's going to be a lot of changes. We're going to talk about what we think those changes are going to be today. Brandon, how you doing? How you feeling about it? Feeling good. I'm excited for silly season uh this year i think it's one of the most exciting things about formula one is that um it could be just an absolutely normal day and then bada bing bada boom you have some major change that just drops out of nowhere and or you get something that's been rumored for months and then something completely the opposite happens um so we missed that a little bit in 2023 but i'm excited for 2024 and uh, we can talk about it today so it's, it's gonna be great I still remember my very first silly season moment in the summer of 2018 when I woke up on like July 7th and saw that Daniel Ricciardo was moving to Reno. It was the worst day of young Justin's high school life. But we've since moved on and I'm ready to talk about a new silly season. And hopefully this is a better one for Danny than that one was. Basically, we're going to go through every single driver that's out of contract. We're going to say if they're going to stay with the team, if they're going to move to a different team, or if unfortunately they're going to be forced to leave willingly or unwillingly the sport of formula one uh so we'll go back and forth like we usually do for these things and let's start with alex albin will he be staying with williams leaving the sport or moving to a different team well um i've got alex albin staying at williams i think that he um you know i performed the car a little bit this past season in 2023 expect him to continue to deliver great results uh, even when the car isn't performing uh, as well. Um, and I think there's no reason for Williams to want to move on to someone else. Alex has been a strong driver for them, and I think he's been a good leader for the team, and uh, I see no reason for them to move on. I agree. I also have Alex Albin staying at Williams. Uh, I don't really think there's necessarily anywhere for Alex to go besides staying at Williams. I don't think any of the major top teams would take him right now. Obviously, Red Bull's not going to take him. I don't see a path to Mercedes. Uh, I think McLaren would take him if they didn't have Oscar, but they've got a budding star there, so there's no reason to take him. The only top team I could see taking him would be Ferrari. Obviously, there has been Ferrari rumors with Alex Albin, um, but I unfortunately don't think the time is right for that. Maybe if it was going into the new regulations, Ferrari would have a seat, but I don't necessarily think there will be uh, a seat for him at that team this year. And so really, I don't think anything else would be a big enough step for Alex or a step he'd be willing to take away from being another number one driver in the team. So I think he's going to stay at Williams. What about his teammate, Logan Sargent? Stay, leave, or move? Um, I am going to say that Logan Sargent is going to ride off into the sunset and retire from Formula One after two very happy years. Uh, probably going to feel like he's accomplished all he can in the sport and you know just right off into the sunset on a bald eagle's back <laughs> singing the national anthem but i agree as well i would love to be proven wrong i would love for logan Sargent to come out and have an incredible season this year the improvement that he had in the off season to be absolutely crazy uh unfortunately i do not see that happening i think he will be leaving the sport to formula one after this year uh i think he'll be replaced by Frederick Vesti is my prediction. If you go all the way back to our grid predictions, I said Frederick Vesti would be in that second Williams seat, and I'm sticking to my gun six months later. I still think it's going to be Frederick Vesti. Um, there are a couple other Mercedes junior drivers who will be in Formula 2 this year, but Frederick is the most experienced, has the most wins, uh, so I think he'll be the one to take that seat instead of Logan Sargent. Yeah, I think I think Logan just hasn't done enough this season, um, this past season, and I don't see as aggressive as the trajectory upwards for him to to keep the seat so it'd be sad to see an american go but uh hopefully we'll get someone else in yeah unfortunately you just watch logan Sargent and you think he's closer to his ceiling than he is his floor and uh ceiling isn't very high (laughs) Uh, usually that's a good thing but in in this scenario it is not (laughs) not the best thing for sure all right someone else who might be at their ceiling kevin magnuson Stay, leave, or move. Um, I think uh, I think Kevin is going to 
uh, leave. I think he'll be um, booted from the Haas seat uh, into retirement or rally racing or whatever he decides to do. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't see Haas moving forward with him after um, the performance he had this past season. And you know, I don't, I don't know that the Haas is going to be good enough for Kevin to convince everybody he needs to stay another season. He's an he's an older driver, and there's a lot of young talent kind of waiting in the wings right now. Um, and I think that uh, Haas will be keen to, um, you know, bring in a rookie and and somebody with, uh, you know, more future potential than Kevin Magnussen. I agree. I also have Kevin Magnussen leaving Formula One after this year. Um, yeah, I definitely didn't have any inspiring performances in 2023. You're going to beat by Nico Hulkenberg quite a bit. And I don't necessarily think that he's going to turn it around any crazy way in 2024. As you say, he is older. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like he's been around forever, but also like still looks super young and kind of falls into a young driver. But he is getting up there. He's in his early 30s. And so there's definitely younger talent out there. I think with the new team principal at Haas, we're seeing that Gene is ready to make some changes and hopefully move in a better direction. And so I think that He'll be looking to make some changes on the driver front as well. I have him being replaced by Ollie Behrman. I think that's the Ferrari Junior with the most potential right now. Obviously, Haas has the Ferrari link, so I could see them having a little bit of influence over that seat and just kind of being one of those things of Haas saying, all right, let's see if we can put a young driver in, hopefully find a spark and help us on our upward trajectory. Um, Kevin Madison's teammate, Nico Hulkenberg, stay, leave, or move. Uh, I'm going to say Nico is going to stay. Um, I think Haas will look for some continuity um, in their drivers going into 2025 um, and bringing in Ollie or another young driver and having them pair, being paired with an experienced driver. Um, I think um, out of the two experienced drivers they have, they'll pick Nico to stay. Um, I mean, Nico scored the vast majority of the points for Haas this past season and probably going to do the same due to his uh qualifying abilities this year so um we'll see what happens but i predict that they'll pair a younger driver with nico to gain some experience i agree i think that makes a lot of sense i think it'll really come down to like which one of the two current drivers has the better season will get paired with a younger driver i think all signs point to that being nico hulkenberg i think he's better at developing a car i think he's better at delivering solid points he crashes less um you know this year he was better at qualifying which had been you know kevin madison's strong suit and then nico holkenberg came and took that over this past year so i think all signs point to nico holkenberg having the better season and, and haas wanting to keep him on as the veteran driver as they move forward with a younger driver i think you're spot on there moving on to another team that has ferrari engines in the back of their car but not for too much longer uh, Guan Yu Zhou, stay, leave, or move? Um, I'm going to say that Guan Yu Zhou is going to leave. Um, I think that, you know, he's he's had kind of a, you know, a longer leash these past couple of years. Um, he probably brings in a lot of money to the team, um, and they've enjoyed that. But as Kick Sauber um, moves towards the Audi, um, deal starting in 2026. I think they'll look to kind of solidify their driver lineup for for that uh, season, the 2026 season, and they'll try to get somebody else in um, in 2025 to to you know just be prepared for that that switch. And I think uh, Guan Yu Zhou is going to be the um, victim of that. I suppose you could say. I agree. I think Guan Yu Zhou will be leaving after this year. Man, we're really agreeing on a lot of things here, but maybe we'll get in maybe we'll get into some different stuff later. Um, yeah, Guan Yu Zhou, I've said it before, just his career reminds me so much of Antonio Giovinazzi, of just he's he's good but not great. He's matching the driver that he's with on most weekends, but he's paired with an old driver who's came from a top team and is now in a small team. And if you're a young driver wanting to move up to a big team, you need to be absolutely destroying that older driver not kind of hanging with him on most weekends and sometimes getting beat pretty comprehensively 
Uh, so I, I feel like if that pattern stays the same, then there's not going to be any team, uh, not even uh, Kick Sauber, that would say he's the future because he can't even beat his current aging teammate comprehensively. So unfortunately, I think Guan Yu will be leaving after this year, most likely replaced by Teo Porcher. Obviously, was the F2 champion this past year, will be sitting on the sideline as their reserve driver this year, uh, be at a couple races with the headset on, as the F2 champion usually is when there's no seat for them. You get that shot of them in the garage with the headset on, a little graphic. Uh, so that'll be Teo this year. And I think he'll probably get the seat in favor of Guan Yu Zhou for 2025. Yep, absolutely. All right, his teammate, Valtteri Bottas, stay, leave, or move. I think uh, Valtteri is going to stay. Um, I think similar to Haas, I think they'll look to bring in, uh, you know, the younger driver, um, Deo Porcher, or another one, and um, they'll pair him with Valtteri just so that uh, he can get some good experience, um, you know, racing alongside a proven race winner in Valtteri. Um, so uh, I think that's the direction they'll move. And potentially, you know, they will, I think they might free up that seat going into 2026 um, with the regulation changes um, and, you know, bring someone else in. But I think for continuity's sake and preparing uh, Theo Porcher for 2026, they'll uh, keep Valtteri in there um, and then maybe shake things up uh, going into 2026. Yeah, I agree completely. But it is the stay that I may be the least confident in just because Valtteri Bottas, his fall off has to be studied. I mean, 2023 was a very uninspiring year for Valtteri Bottas. I just look at him some weekends and I'm like, this is the guy that that has beaten Lewis Hamilton in his career to pole positions and race wins. And then I see him finishing like 18th in Spain. And I'm like, what is going on? Uh, so like, I definitely could see them moving on from a performance sake, but because I think they're more likely to move on Guan Yu Zhou for a different young driver I think Valtteri will stay I think it will be on a one year contract and that will probably be his last year in Formula 1 I don't see him driving for Audi when the time comes but I do think that he will be on the team for 2025 just for to be a an older driver on the team with experience help and development more than a rookie could um, so I think they'll keep him around for one more season but I think that'll probably be his last yep I agree I agree. Unfortunately, as nice as it is to see Valtteri on the grid and, you know, doing bike races and stuff, I guess we'll probably see more bike content after 2025. Yeah, more bike content, more bike content. Other than that, no more Formula One content. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Ricciardo, AlphaTauri, no more. Now Visa Cash App RB. Once he finishes his first year with the old V car, will he be staying, leaving, or moving to a different team? Um, I'm going to say that Daniel is going to move to a different team. I don't think this is his uh, last season in Formula One. Uh, there's no way that that'll happen. Um, Daniel's just such a marketable driver, and um, he's really loved by everybody on the grid, I think, and you know, fans alike. Um, so I think that um, he'll... I think he'll have a pretty successful season with V-Carb, and then um, we'll see who picks him up. Uh, but uh, I think think he's going to move teams going into 2025, but uh, time will tell. Yep, I agree. I also believe that Daniel Ricciardo will be moving teams this silly season. I don't know what team that could be, um, but yes, I do think he'll have a successful year uh, driving in that Visa Cash App RB car that is heavily inspired by the RB19, a car that he's familiar with, spent some time in the seat, actually Aaron spent a lot of time in the simulator in this past year um, with him being, still technically being a Red Bull contracted driver. He's not technically a Visa Cash App RB driver like UP Sonoda is. He's still technically on loan from Red Bull. Uh, so I think a lot of things are pointing towards if Daniel Ricciardo has a good year and beats Yuki Sonoda, there might be uh, another team that loves him dearly I would like to take him back, potentially. More on that later. More on that later. More on that later. Well, uh, yeah, more on that later. Yuki Sonoda, his teammate, stay, leave, or move. See, I think I think Yuki's going to stay um, 
with V carb. Um, I, I think Yuki's had a good, uh, upward trajectory. And I think having Daniel as a teammate has actually helped Yuki a lot. Um, you know, being able to work with someone who has won races before, who's, you know, competed, um, for in formula one for a long, longer than Yuki has. Um, uh, so I think that will continue to help Yuki Sabal, but Yuki will have a decent season this, uh, this season and, um, they'll see no reason to move on from him. Um, I kind of envisioned maybe Yuki's career taking kind of a Pierre Gasly esque, um, turn. I think Yuki will kind of stay and, and become maybe that veteran driver that, um, helps the new younger driver that is brought in um, to replace uh, Daniel Ricardo moving teams um, kind of develop and and you know we've seen a lot of maturity from Yuki over the last uh, year or so um, and uh, I think we'll continue to see that Yuki is going to stay with Visa Ketchup RB I agree. I also think Yuki Tsunoda will stay. I debated a little bit on this one. If he was going to move teams, I don't think he will. I think he'll probably get one more year uh, at least cash app RB after this year. His career has been on an upward trajectory. It will be interesting to see what happens if he gets beaten pretty heavily by Daniel Ricciardo. Because obviously Yuki looked really good this past year. And when he was getting beat by Pierre Gasly, everyone was like, oh, he's young. It's okay. And then he moved into that team leader role this past year looked good now he's kind of not in that team leader role anymore with Daniel Ricciardo coming in so it'll be interesting to see the tactics perception of him if he gets beaten by Daniel Ricciardo will it be excused because Daniel Ricciardo's a race winner and he has more experience or will it be kind of looked down upon because Yuki's been in that team for four seasons now and should be on top of the car and should have staked his claim over that team so uh, it'll be really interesting to see what his career looks like after this season but i do think he will be staying with visa cash app rb for the moment but someone who used to be his teammate no longer with that team has moved on to a french outfit pierre gasly stay leave or move um i think pierre is going to stay with uh alpine um you know pierre is uh, i think the epitome of a french racing driver and uh, Alpine being the only French team on the grid, I think they value having uh, two uh, French drivers, and I think they'll they'll keep Pierre going into 2025. Uh, Pierre had a you know decently good season this past season, and um, if if he and his teammate can not crash into each other and uh, you know help each other out a little bit more, I think you know, I think maybe he'll, they'll both have a better season. So. Um, We'll see how it goes, but you know they've been making a lot of changes at Alpine, and I think um, it's been in a positive direction. Uh, um, so I think we'll continue to see a little bit of a upward trajectory and Pierre having a decent season. Uh, I agree. Also have Pierre Gasly staying at Alpine. I can't see anything better for him or the team. I think the team does really enjoy having the French lineup, and they have two good French drivers. It's not like they're having a French driver in there for the sake of having a French driver, Pierre Gasly is the quality driver to have in that seat. He did beat Estevan Ocon over the course of the season, which I don't think a lot of people saw coming, but good for him. I think he'll continue to embed himself in the team, maybe stake more of a claim to that number one driver role, which I think he really wants personally. Uh, so I don't think he'll look elsewhere. I don't think the team will be looking elsewhere. I think he'll be staying at Alpine. Which I also think about his teammate. I think Espan Ocon is going to stay as well. I don't think there's any reason for Alpine to move on. I do think they really enjoy having that double French driver lineup. I don't know if Espan Ocon has turned into the star that they imagined he would be when they signed him to that long contract a couple of years ago. I think they kind of viewed him in the same light as maybe Charles Leclerc or Max Verstappen, thinking he was in that same echelon. And all of us fans are like, yeah, I don't know about that one. Maybe not. Uh, and it has kind of come true that he has been better than average, but I definitely think he's not in the same tier as the Lando Norris's, the Charlotte Claire's, the the potential future world champions. Uh, so there is, I feel like if he was any nationality besides French, Alpine would maybe consider looking in a different direction, but considering that he is better than average and a completely serviceable driver, but also 
has the French ties to the team, I think Alpine will be happy to let Esteban Ocon stay beyond the 2024 season. I agree. Um, for all those reasons, I think he'll stay and, and just, um, having a double driver French lineup, I think is really, really important to them. And, um, yeah, I think there being not really any other solid, uh, options, um, with French drivers, um, currently on the grid. Um, I think they'll opt for continuity and, um, you know, prepping for the regulation changes, having that driver continuity, I think is important. And I think we'll see them both stay. I mean, they're both race winners. Um, both have a decent amount of podiums in their careers and um, and perform uh, well when the car is performing well. So Lance Stroll, stay, leave, or move? I I really really debated this one, um, and I think I'm going to go with the safer answer here. And uh, I think the safer answer is Lance Stroll is going to be forced into retirement. Um, Lance is kind of a, a hothead. Um, I think, uh, he's crashed a lot. Um, and I think that, you know, push is going to come to shove and, and Lawrence is really going to have to choose. Is he going to keep his son in the seat or is he going to, um, you know, want to fight for championships like he said he's going to. And I think, um, I think he's going to have to force his son into retirement and uh, allow Lance to live off of his billions. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to happen. I think Fernando, um, Fernando's been, you know, very nice to Lance over over this season. But I think maybe Fernando's frustration will go if, will grow if Lance uh, can't continue to deliver and help them in the constructors championship more than he did this past season. Um, so. Maybe that actually isn't the safer answer, but but, uh, that's what I'm going with, and I think that's the more likely thing that's going to happen. Yeah, that's crazy. You had me faked out. You said safer answer. I was like, all right, he's going to say he's going to stay. He said he's going to leave. That's crazy. Uh, I think Lance Stroll is going to stay. I debated this one a lot too, um, but I think it's too early in Aston Martin's upward trajectory for Lawrence to move on. I think he's still holding out hope that he'll win a world championship with his son and he'll at least give him one more year but just with the new facilities they're building and the honda engines coming uh i think i think he's just gonna he just can't let go of his dream of having his son win a world championship and living vicariously through him uh, i do think there will be more tensions within the team especially if the car is not as good this year that fernando alonso might begin to be become a little strained and there would be the fear of of losing both drivers if Fernando Alonso decided to call it quits if relationships ran within the team. Uh, so I think Lance Stroll will stay. I looked it up last night to to get this list of all the drivers who were out of contract in 2024, and it just said Lance Stroll's contract was rolling. So <laughs> the idea that he has the seat as long as he wants. Uh, but I don't know. I think he'll stay, but definitely could be up in the air. What about his teammate, Fernando Alonso? Getting up there in age, but still racing it quick. What do you think? Um, I think Fernando is going to stay. Um, I think, you know, if if there's any chance that the car is, like, decently quick this year, uh, I think Fernando will just, he's just going to, he always has that itch, and he's going to he's gonna want to keep fighting, especially with the new regulations and Honda coming in. Uh, I think Fernando knows how much Honda, you know, helped Red Bull turn it around. Um and with that being their most recent experience in Formula One, I think, you know, Fernando's just going to, you know, want to hang on and see see what's possible. So um, I think Fernando's going to stay. Um, as long as the car is just decently quick. If they're, if they're in the fight relatively, then they've got Fernando. Yeah, I think he'll stay as well. It's so crazy to think that he's probably still going to be on the grid in 2026. He's going to be approaching a two-decade-long career, three-decade-long career almost, which is insane. Uh, and just, but yeah, I think he'll stay just for the hope of having that world championship-winning car one more time, and then being so close to the regulation change, he'll want to stay and just see what happens, you know. So that's crazy. 
he's getting old, but still one of the quickest drivers on the grid. I can't see him going to a different team, and I can't see him wanting to leave the sport. So I think he'll be staying with Aston Martin, and I think they're happy to have someone of his abilities on the team as well. So I think it will be a mutual stay. Carlos Sainz, his compatriot, another Spaniard on the grid, out of contract with Ferrari. Will he stay, leave, or move? I think that Carlos is going to stay. Um, there's been a lot of rumors about Carlos uh, moving to Audi in 2026. Um, I think that's still a possibility, but I think as far as 2025 is concerned, uh, it doesn't really make sense for Carlos to leave and go somewhere else. Uh, I think moving anywhere else would be a you know, sideways step at best. And I think the only team that would, uh, you know, even be a possible, you know, even like uh, that he would even have a desire to race for would be McLaren um, going back to them. But I, I don't think that they'll have a seat. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I think it makes sense for Carlos to stay at Ferrari for at least one more year. Um, and then if the Audi thing happens, that'd be cool. But we'll see. I think that largely depends on how much success he has in 2024 and 2025 with Ferrari. Yep, I think he'll be staying with Ferrari as well. I think it's definitely like too soon for him to want to make that Sauber Audi move. I think it, it wouldn't make any sense for him to leave Ferrari to go and be with Sauber before their Audi. So I think he'll stay with Ferrari. I think Ferrari will be happy to have him stay. He's been matching Charles Leclerc more this past year than he was uh, in the years prior to that. And so I think they don't really have any young drivers that they're ready to promote. So I think Carlos Sainz staying with them for another year makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Last, but certainly not least, Sergio Perez, second driver at Red Bull, will be out of contract after the 2024 season. Will he be staying with the team, moving to a different team, or leaving the sport of Formula One? Big shocker with this guess, um, but I think Sergio is going to retire. Um, and, um, yeah, I'll, I I think, you know, I think it's his seat to lose. And Christian said that earlier this week in an interview, was that, you know, the 2025 seat is, is Sergio's to lose. Um, and with, with, you know, performance converging, um, with stable regulations going into the 2024 season, um, Red Bull's going to need that second driver to to really be on it. So I think maybe Sergio's gap to Max um, will result in more places lost this season if he doesn't step it up. And um, if if he can't do that, then I think Red Bull's absolutely ready to move on. Um, so uh, I think it'll be kind of one of those... I'm retiring, but like it was kind of like a mutual agreement. They said, if you leave, we'll let you, you know, ride off into the sunset, take your retirement, as opposed to just kind of kicking him out the door. So um, I think that'll happen, you know. It's a conversation that'll play out between Helmet and Sergio. Um, so, yeah, but uh, I'm... I know that I think you feel the same way, but I'll, I'll let you talk about who you think uh, might replace Sergio. Yes, I do think Sergio Perez will be leaving the sport of Formula One as well. I said it's his seat to lose, and I think he will follow through and lose it. <laughs> I, just don't, I don't see his performance as being well enough for him to, to keep that seat. I agree that if the gap stays the same, I think there'll be more cars filling in that gap than there has been in, in seasons past. I don't think that will... Uh, reflect well on him especially moving forward I do think it will be one of those things where it's like if you call it retirement we'll call it retirement uh, and we can all part as friends uh, I don't think there's there's nowhere to go after you've raced with Red Bull you know he's not going to go drive for Williams he doesn't need the money he doesn't need to keep doing it you know he's got a family I think he'd be happy to you know, if he if he like picks up a win this year and has a, a relatively okay season you know, I feel like he'd be happy to call it quits on his career and everyone could leave his friends uh and someone would be smiling big about it i think it'd be daniel ricardo i think he's gonna move up i think if he just 
beats Yuki even slightly over the course of the season where you can look at it and say he's the better driver. I think he's going to be in that seat. Like I think I think Red Bull want to be able to put him in that seat. I think it would just look really good for them as a team to have him next to Max again. Uh, they know that he wouldn't necessarily be a threat to Max. I think this time around, Daniel would be happy to be playing more of a number two driver role in that team than he was in the past. Um, but I think the leadership of Red Bull is itching to have that reunion and have Daniel Ricciardo back in the car. Uh, you know, there was talks last summer when all of this stuff started ramping up that, you know, part of the leadership didn't see Sergio Perez as a Red Bull driver because they had to get him out and getting Daniel back in would, uh, you know, have a full Red Bull team again. Uh, so I think there are a lot of signs that are, are putting pressure on Sergio Perez and pointing towards Daniel Ricciardo being in that Red Bull 2025 office. Man, I, I just think the, the uh, notoriety that it would bring to Red Bull, that bring Daniel back and have that, I mean, it, it's, you know, Daniel said it multiple times. It's like, that's the perfect storybook ending to his career is being a race, you know, being able to race it at Red Bull again. And um, I think Christian definitely wants that. I think, I think probably Helmet wants that too, but you know, they need the, they need the numbers to back it up before they just, you know, throw them in the seat. So I think, I think you're right. If he just slightly beats Yuki and you can look at it and say, yeah, I mean, performance wise, he was the better driver this season. You know, I mean, that would make Daniel the top, top driver in their talent pool. Um, and you know, if Sergio can't, uh, make it happen, then, you know, there's no reason to, to keep him on. So, uh, yeah, I totally agree. And I think that, uh, um, can you know, just be over the moon to race for Red Bull again. So I'd be, I'd be over the moon to see him racing for Red Bull again, man. I sure hope it happens. I sure hope. Well, that is all of the drivers that are out of contract at the end of 2024. Our answers were pretty similar. You can tell we've been watching Formula One for the same perspective for the last couple of years and, and have formed some similar opinions. But maybe that's why we're doing this podcast together, talking about it. Uh, any parting podium thoughts for our wonderful listeners before we head on out? Parting podium thoughts? I mean, I don't know. I'm excited for for 2025, but we gotta we got to have 2024 first, so... It's gonna be it's gonna be a great time. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a lot of stuff to talk about over the summer break, um, kind of at the height of silly season. It's usually when that kind of picks up and starts rolling. So, um, looking forward to that. And yeah, it's gonna be a great season. It's got a few few more weeks, three and a half weeks or so till testing, and uh, just a few days till the first uh, livery launch. This week, Hass on Friday will be launching the livery, and then we've got Williams in the next Monday. So. It's all coming together. We're getting close. Brandon, as usual, it has been a pleasure recording the podcast with you. To everyone listening, thank you so much for sticking around and hearing our predictions about the 2024 silly season. Please let us know what you think is going to be happening in the 2024 silly season. And we cannot wait to talk to you next time. See ya. Later.